Hi guys and welcome. This is a general reading for the collective of Gemini, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Leo is a Gemini. That's Leo. Welcome cross watchers. And oh no, you can't go there. Nope, nope, nope. And uh, welcome to those of you who are brand new to the channel. Yeah, that's our little channel mascot, Leo. Um, hope you're all having a wonderful day as we head into the weekend. Yeah, um, I'm going to pull from Healing Waters. Uh, this is Rebecca Campbell's deck. It's new to me, though I know it's been around a little while. Let's see what you get to activate the reading from Healing Waters. And I'll tell you why I'm using it in a second. The Wishing Well. Beautiful. Unexpected gifts, kindness, and karmic jewels. I'm, I'm trying to look at what I'm seeing here. I'm making out the figure perfect because I'm seeing a pearl, which Gemini is your birthstone. Let me see if I can get it close enough. Do you see this figure here? And there is, there is the pearl. It's like she is inside this jewel. Um, the wishing well, she's in a well. Right, there's the light up above. I know, I'm just getting acquainted with the deck, so I'm fascinated. Uh, unexpected gifts, kindness, and karmic jewels. Yes, Gemini. That's feeling good. So I'm pulling from um, Healing Waters. I have to keep looking at the box because we are um, opening September with that new moon in Virgo and around about the 17th we have the full moon in Pisces. Pisces is a water sign and the full moons are always about release yes but this is going to be powerful because it's an eclipse. So this new moon in Virgo while not an eclipse sort of opens up um, heralds the beginning of eclipse season and that eclipse on the 17th will be occurring with the south node. It's a south node eclipse. The eclipses are always involving the nodes of the moon. And the south node is the past, so we're going to be releasing, um, dredging up some stuff from the past that needs to be released. And usually there are some, yeah, soul contract stuff that we have to clear out, um, stuff from the past that we have to dredge up and release that might require healing. Virgo is a very healing sign. So that's why I chose that deck. And I love that there might be um, some gifts for you in that realm. So I'm using the Soul Contract Tarot Spread. It looks a lot like the layout looks like my abbreviated modified Celtic Cross, but I'll tell you all about the meanings of the cards as I pull them. Right, so we have some pain to deal with. The nature of your karmic soul contract has to do with healing wounds. Yes, and your main lesson is all of this feels very connected almost to um, the Cancerian reading because, no, the um, Taurus reading. We just did Taurus, your Gemini. Because it's also about um, how to manage apologies and sincere messages from the heart when you're coming from some wounded space. Um, let's see what you're already aware of is the need for healing. <laughs> like trying, to, I'm telling you this and then the card follows and um, the shadow work that's needed is about feeling safe and protected in your vulnerability. It's getting in the way of your happiness past healing you've already accomplished. We've got the full here, and I'll talk about that in a minute. And the final step on the healing journey within this soul contract that signals you're either ready to cut a cord, if that's what you feel is really needed, and or to take the next step up in this soul contract, get to the next level, um, has to do with either opening up um, and revealing more of yourself because the high priestess often keeps things under wraps, right? She doesn't speak and there's off, often secrecy, but it also could be about your intuition, right? Trusting your intuition more. So we'll see when we get there. But now in this past, 
um, past healing that you've already accomplished, the fool is about taking risks. So there must be something that you've already sort of said, well, I'm, I'm you know, going to kind of go for it. Even though I might get burned, I'm going to take a chance. So there may have been something along the way that, you know, and you now have some receipts that say, yep, I've taken a risk here and I didn't get totally burned. So there's some form of um, past healing that you've already accomplished by taking a chance on it. So let's go ahead and see Three of Swords and the lesson here with the Page of Cups. In this particular soul contract, there's the soul contract, Saturn, right? Saturn is a great teacher and the Lord of Karma. And the world is talking about um, the lessons, right? Closing out cycles. And so a new cycle can begin. And part of the nature of the world is that we want to close out a cycle for good. So we don't have to learn the lesson again. And that we can then get beyond it with some peace of mind. Um, getting beyond the turbulence, getting the peace of mind, moving to calmer waters, and then choosing the next leg of the journey forward, right? The two of wands is a choice. Now we say, okay, got through that, except an apology was offered, I received it. And I allow the healing from that to take place. I get the closure, I move on. That seems to be part of the nature of this soul contract, this karmic soul contract with your person is about that process. Uh, you know, relationships don't come without pain. It's just kind of wired in. And it's how you navigate that healing process. Um, and then choosing the path forward is about now, now that I've learned that, now that I've gotten the closure, now that I've learned those important lessons, what do I want? Okay, so really beautiful. Um, I'm holding this up so you can see it. Nature of this soul contract is about those wounds. The important lesson here is about the you know, sincere messages and how you receive them, especially messages of apology, the lessons you learn, the way you complete the, the lessons and close out those difficult, painful cycles to the point where you can get beyond it um, and get the peace of mind and, and move beyond and not have to keep repeating the cycles. And then the two of wands underneath in your unconscious awareness says, okay, now that I've got closure around that, what do I want? You know, where is this path taking me next? And what do I have to set in motion? What action steps do I need to take so I don't go back to here again, that I move forward and I move onward? So it could be within this connection, right? But it could also be in a totally new direction. That's part of the process for you to determine. Okay, so what are you already aware of, Four of Swords? Mm-hmm. You're already aware. Um, there may be some healing here. Something feel it feels more social in nature. Feels like maybe you take a back seat to something that um, you know, like two's company, three's a crowd. I'm seeing the Queen of Wands is reversed. Um, feeling a little disempowered. I'm saying that because the strength card underneath, needing to gather up your strength, your courage, your confidence to overcome an obstacle. You're aware that somehow in mixed company here or where you're like the odd man out, if there's third party situation that you may be dealing with, that's for those of you who say, yep, that's my deal, where you may feel like I don't, I don't have control in this situation. Um, if there's a karmic partner involved, for some of you that may be the case, you're already aware that, that you may be feeling like, I don't have a sense of personal power um, to change the dynamic here. Um, and so that strength card being in your unconscious awareness needs to get to the top of the deck so you can feel that sense of personal self-efficacy like, nope, I got this, put my game face on, and I'm gonna get into the situation and reconstruct it so that I feel 
like I have more of a say, like, right? There's something here where you're aware um, that you're not, um, it's not that you need to be in control or, 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 or have power, but that you're taking a back seat or you're being, you feel like you're riding in a sidecar and it doesn't, it's, it's, it's causing some pain. It's causing some sense of um, disempowerment. It is not working for you and you're aware of it. Okay. And the shadow work here with the sun, it's impacting your happiness. And to some degree, you may not be feeling very safe in this situation. And what I mean by that is emotionally. You may be feeling like I can't really be vulnerable, right? I'm, I'm, I'm not gonna oh I'm not gonna reveal my true heart, my right? That four of pentacles, shutting down the heart chakra, two of pentacles, I don't know what I'm really dealing with. I'm kind of torn, I'm on the fence. The shadow work is I thought I was gonna have my happily ever after, and now I'm not so sure. And it's because there's a dynamic here where you're not in the spotlight or you you're kind of in someone else's. You're in the shadow of someone else's light. That's what I'm seeing. You're in the shadow of someone else's light. Is and, and it could just be a friend. It doesn't have to be anything nefarious. It could even be your partner. It could be the person that you're here watching about. Um, that you're, you know, somehow being put on a back burner or whatever the situation is. Um, so remember, it's a general reading. It's not a private reading. So you got to take it as it resonates for you. And it just feels like you're a little disempowered here. And it's uh, the shadow work needs to be done. What do you need to feel a sense of um, like you can be more vulnerable? Okay, that it isn't going to, um, it isn't gonna kind of uh, impact your future happiness the way the dynamic is at the moment. All right, now in the past, some healing that you've already accomplished. There's the high priestess again. Yeah, so you trusted your intuition. You took a chance. There was maybe some kind of tense dynamic, some kind of something a little chaotic, something a little tense, maybe something where there was some heat argument. Uh, the Five of Wands can also be an outside source of conflict. So if that third party situation is, uh, you know, part of your storyline and you trusted your intuition, you took a chance and, and you landed on your feet and it worked out. So you have some evidence that you were able to kind of pull it off. Um, and that fool is, you know, sometimes it's just about... Um, Assessing the situation, Johnny, Johnny on the spot, being really quick about it and not giving yourself a lot of time to think. And that is where the high priestess comes in is I'm just going to go on my gut check, on my instinct in this moment to sort of quickly heal this conflict. And you obviously did so to great effect. Great. You accomplished that. Now, the final step is something to do with this high priestess let's see in the final step on this healing journey that signals aha yes so you already had an experience where you didn't have a lot of time you had to make a snap ass assessment in the moment you went on instinct that it worked but now we have to take that and expand it and, 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 and apply it to those moments where you have, where there's more time for you to kind of let your fears get the better of you. Where you're up all night, kind of in that obsessed adjacent energy, bite your nails down the quick, not sleeping, scrolling through your phone till all crazy hours of the night, right? Getting into like your group text thing with all your friends and whatever it is that you do <laughs> and or with this person, you know, all the stuff that people do these days. I don't do it because 
I'm an old lady, but I know what people do. And <laughs> they drive themselves into like a tizzy from fears, insecurities, apprehensions, and it festers. And then the fears get bigger. And before you know it, you're dealing with the Indiana Jones boulder of worry, and it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. I've been saying this phrase a lot lately, and whereby we are creating the very thing we fear. Okay? It is a thing. Okay? So you'll know that you're ready to your that final step of the healing journey is when your ability to go to your higher vibration of your intuition to override what tends to create a situation where the very thing you don't want which is your person walking away or you walking away from them where the very thing you don't want to happen you create but where what your healing journey will be complete when you start with your intuition and you override the fears and the worries and the insecurities. Mm -hmm. So, very interesting. Where your intuition says, I'm not in trouble, meaning I'm not like unsafe. I'm not gonna spend all night worrying about this. I'll know if it's time to go. And if this person is not right for me and they opt out, I dodged a bullet. You see what I'm saying? It's a different, it's an inner knowing that you're safe, that what you really want is this. And that this is just like um, that quote by Abraham Hicks, I've said it to several people already, that worry, you know, the anxiety and the worry is your imagination creating something you do not want. Mm -hmm. But your intuition can override it. So I love this for you, Gemini, because I, I feel like what I'm seeing here is a lot of pent up you know, squirrely energy um, that can get the better of you at times. Mm -hmm. So that is your soul contract and it's all going to play itself out in the near future. <laughs> okay. I am going to take this to the extended um, because I want to look at your partner here for, for different reasons. I'm going to give you the astrology that showed up here too. And what I want to really do is sort of see their perception of you. So how, what's their, what's their take on you? How, what, it, you know, what are their feelings for you, their intentions toward you? Um, what do they receive from you? What are they getting from you? You know, um, you could take that as emotionally if you want. Uh, what is the physical fulfillment level? And if you're not close enough for that, what, what's the chemistry? attraction and where is this connection headed that's what we're going to look at in the extended and the links to that are below you have option one two or three so be sure you look at that okay so you know which option you're getting and here we go before i give you the astrology if you enjoy the readings don't forget if you haven't already to subscribe below that's our energetic exchange that's my ask it's free of charge so thank you very much in advance. Here we go. The Page of Cups, Cancer, Pisces, Scorpio, the World Card, Saturn, Aquarius, and Capricorn. We have Queen of Wands is Aries. The Strength card is Leo. The Sun is the Sun, but rules the sign of Leo. And we have over here the Fool is the planet Uranus, which rules Aquarius. The High Priestess is the Moon. She's out twice. And uh, so was the fool. Um, was the fool out? Yeah, the fool's out twice. And then the moon is here, which uh, is Pisces. So that's what I have for you. Really interesting reading. I'm headed to the extended. I'll see you there in a second. Bye for now.